Welcome to Electro Online, and in our previous example, we have a problem very much like this one, but now I want to see if you can actually follow this systematically. So this is how we're going to go about doing a problem like this. In the previous example, we kind of went a little bit around the theory, the theory of impulse, but here we have a ball mass 5 kilograms uh, moving towards the wall of 20 meters per second, an angle relative to the wall of 56.1 degrees. The final angle relative to the wall would be 36.9 degrees, and it's going to be leaving with a velocity of 10 meters per second. So what is the force between the ball and the wall in the x-direction? What is the force between the ball and the wall in the y-direction during the impact? And of course, remember that the impulse, uh, and with the impulse, the force, uh, this will be force and this will be time. And of course, in real life, the impulse will look kind of like that, but we're going to approximate it by taking the average value of the force during the impact and the impact lasts for 10 milliseconds. So before we can actually solve the problem, we do want to find the initial velocity in the x and the y direction because that's important. So here, uh, the velocity initial in the x direction, so we have v initial in the x direction is going to be v initial times, and of course, if this angle right here is 56.1 degrees, that will then be the opposite to this angle. So here we have to be careful. It's not automatically the cosine of theta. In this case, it's the sine of theta. So the sine of theta initial, and so this is going to be 20 meters per second, multiplied times the sine of theta, that would be the sine of 56.1 degrees, which is 0.8. So this is going to be 16 meters per second initially in the x direction. In the y direction, we're going to have v initial in the y direction, which is equal to v initial. And in this case, it's going to be times, this will be adjacent to the angle, so that will be the cosine of theta initial. In this case, that will be equal to 20 meters per second times the cosine of 56.1 degrees, and that would be 0 0.6, so 0.6 times 20, that would be there, therefore equal to 12 meters per second. So now we have the initial velocity in the x direction and the initial velocity in the y direction, the two components. Doing the same for the uh, final velocity, here we can see that that would be v final in the x direction, which is equal to v final times, now notice that this angle right here would be opposite to this component when we bring it over here, so that would be times the sine of 36.9 degrees, and so that would be equal to, let's see, the final velocity is 10 meters per second, so 10 meters per second, and the sine of 36.9 degrees is 0.6, so 0 0.6, so that's equal to 6 meters per second for the final velocity in the x direction. And those are just magnitudes, not directions. So those are just magnitudes. So notice that this is a negative direction, but we just have the magnitude of the velocity. And then we have the v final in the y direction, which is equal to v final times, that would be adjacent to the angle, so times the cosine of theta final, which is 10 meters per second, multiplied times the cosine of 36.9 degrees, which is 0.8, so that would be 8 meters per second. So the final velocity in the y direction would be 8 meters per second. All right, now, what you're going to do is define the impulse in two ways. Impulse can be defined as the force times the time of the collision. So how long the two objects stay in contact, that's delta t, and then the force between them, that is the impulse. We can also say that the impulse is equal to the change in the momentum, which is equal to the change in the mass times velocity, which is equal to mass times the change in velocity, because it's the velocity that's changing, not the mass, which is equal to the mass times v final minus v initial. So now when we set these two equal to each other, we can say that the force times the, the, the time elapsed is equal to mass times v final minus v initial, or the force is equal to the mass times v final minus v initial divided by delta t. Now that we have that equation, we can apply that to both the x and the y direction. So force in the x direction is equal to the mass times v final in the x direction. So let's just write it, v final in the x direction minus v final, uh, v initial, not final, initial in the x direction times the elapsed time. So plug in the numbers, we have five kilograms. V final in the x direction. What's, uh, let's see here, that's right here. That would be six meters per second. And it's to the right, so it's a positive six meters per second. So six meters per second minus the velocity initial in the x direction, that would be a 
16 meters per second, but it's negative, so it's a minus 16 meters per second, like that, and the whole thing divided by 0 0.01 seconds. Notice that 10 milliseconds is 1 100 of a second. This minus cancels out that minus, that makes it plus 16, plus 6 is 22, times 5 is 110, divided by 0.01, that's like multiplying times 100, that would be 11,000, and the units are newtons. So the, the force in the x direction would be 11,000 newtons in this case. Doing the same for the y direction. The force in the y direction equals the mass, times the v final in the y direction, minus v initial in the y direction, all divided by the elapsed time. So that's 5 kilograms. Multiply times v final in the y direction. That would be this final right here. It's a negative 8 meters per second because it's in a downward direction. So it's minus 8 meters per second. Minus the initial velocity in the y direction. Initially we had a velocity of 12 meters per second, but again it's negative, so it's a minus 12 meters per second. And the whole thing divided by the time elapsed, 0.01 seconds. And so we can say that F final, the final force in the y direction. Notice again that this minus will cancel out that minus, so that's a plus 12, minus 8 is a plus 4, times 5 is 20, divided by 0.01, that's like multiplying times 100, 20 times 100 is 2,000, 2,000 newtons in the y direction. So those are the forces between the ball and the wall for those 10 milliseconds on average when the ball collides. So 11,000 newtons in the x direction and 2,000 newtons in the y direction. And that's how we do that.